Hello. Firstly, I would like to thank Professor Anne Duggan for the generous introduction and to express my gratitude for being given the opportunity to give this talk. I'm speaking today on behalf of the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare at the time of release of the fourth atlas. This atlas is dealing with prevention of preterm birth and in particular early term birth, which I will discuss in detail soon. Preterm birth is the single greatest cause of death in young children in Australia and one of the major causes of lifelong disability, including issues such as cerebral palsy, blindness and deafness. And being born at the later preterm ages and early term ages may be followed by increased chances of behavioural and learning problems at school age. The title of this talk is Safely Preventing Harm from Unnecessary Preterm and Early Term Birth, delivered to you on behalf of the Commission, but also in collaboration with the Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance, which is a subcommittee of the Perinatal Society of Australia and New Zealand. The social media campaign that underpins our national program is known as the Whole Nine Months, and I am employed by the University of Western Australia. Australia's preterm birth rate has been rising, it has been rising dramatically, as it has been across all developed countries like Australia in recent years. From the mid-1990s, the rate has gone from just under 7% to well over 8% today. This is important because this, this condition of preterm birth, as I said previously, is the single greatest cause of death in young children and a major cause of disability in our community. It is also very, very expensive. The Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance grew out of an initiative started in Western Australia in mid to late 2014. As a result of the early success of that initiative, we were funded by the National Health and Medical Research Council in Canberra through a partnership grant to roll out the program across Australia. And thus was born the National Alliance in June 2018. This is the world's first national preterm birth prevention program. Australia is the first country in the world, and at this stage, the only country in the world to have such a national program. That the social media campaign and all the print media campaign you will recognise by the name the whole nine months. So this is, a, this is a slide showing what happened in Western Australia when we introduced a suite of interventions. Now there were seven interventions which you can, you can find in any of the references provided in the atlas. But essentially they came down to education of the healthcare workforce and the women and families of our state that no baby should be delivered before 39 weeks gestation without a medical or obstetric indication. Secondly, we made sure that the length of the cervix was measured at all mid-pregnancy scans conducted in the state at the time when all Australian women will have a mid-pregnancy scan. If the cervix is short, it predicts early birth. If the cervix is long, it predicts term birth. And if the cervix is found to be short in mid-pregnancy, there's something we can do about it. Prescription of a simple tablet called natural vaginal progesterone taken each evening till 36 weeks gestation has a dramatic effect in reducing the risk of preterm birth. We also intro introduced use of that treatment for any woman with a past history of preterm birth, which is a very strong predictor of future outcomes. This slide is a run chart. This is implementation research, and implementation research is presented as run charts. On the vertical axis is the thing we're interested in, which in this case is singleton preterm birth. The red dotted line represents the median of the preceding years. In other words, what the rate has been doing over preceding years. The horizontal axis shows the time. Here, pale blue represents when the initiative had been introduced. The dots on the graph represent epochs of time, predetermined epochs of time. And if you have six below or, ab or above the median in a row, that denotes statistical significance. This slide shows the effects of introduction of the initiative in our major hospital, our major perinatal hospital in Western Australia, King Edward Memorial Hospital. And as you can see, there is a dramatic and immediate reduction in preterm birth by about 20%, highly statistically significant. 
and the effect was sustained. This slide shows the effect across the state overall. Now in the state overall, there was a reduction in preterm birth after we introduced the initiative and after we did an outreach program making sure that everybody in the state understood what we were doing. But the effect then dissipated. We took our foot off the accelerator, the effect went, and in fact the, the rate started rising in parallel with the rest of Australia. This taught us that we can, with known knowledge today, safely lower the rate of preterm birth, but the program needs to be sustained and continued or it will lose its effect. After all, it's heavily based on education and the population we're educating is turning over every nine months because they're pregnant women. But thus was born the Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance, which has a single goal, and that is to safely lower the rate of preterm birth across our nation. This slide represents the names of the 28 people on the steering committee, representing all of the six states and two territories in Australia, the people who are taking the lead role and all the various disciplines that need to be represented to, for us to be effective in safely implementing this program across Australia. And this represents the smiling faces of these 28 people at a meeting in Sydney pre-COVID in November 2018. In the front row you will see the executive uh, and these faces are the faces uh, that are leading our national initiative right today. This slide comes from Australia's Mothers and Babies Reports 2007 and 2017, showing the effect of time on our preterm birth rate and our early term birth rate. Now preterm birth is defined historically as birth before 37 completed weeks of pregnancy. This is an old definition we have inherited from our ancestors. It comes from more than half a century ago when data collection and understanding was of course less. We now know a baby at 37 weeks is not fully mature. It's, the answer should be 39 weeks gestation. It takes till 39 weeks for the baby's brain and other organs to be fully mature. Between 35 and 39 weeks, the baby's brain puts on another half in its weight. Now, if it is delivered early, some of that can be recovered after birth with brain development, but clearly much of it cannot. So the definition should be 39 weeks, but we're not changing it because it is entrenched at 37 weeks. We now call birth before 37 weeks preterm birth and birth at 37 and 38 weeks as early term birth. This slide shows on the left the rate of preterm birth before 37 completed weeks, showing the increase as I had shown previously. But the next two sets of bars show the rise in early term birth at 37 and 38 weeks. You can see that across Australia, like all developed countries of this type, the rate of early term birth has been rising and there are serious implications from that happening. The fourth Australian Atlas of Healthcare Variation also shows the rates of planned birth before 39 completed weeks. This sh slide shows in 27, 2017, caesarean section rates with no medical or obstetric indication. Before 37 weeks, the rate rose from 13 to 19%, before 38 weeks from 25 to 33%, and before 39 weeks from 43 to 56%. That means a very high proportion of planned deliveries before 39 weeks gestation by caesarean section have no obstetric or medical indication. So the question is, what does that mean? Here's a hypothetical scenario. Concentrate heavily on the next few slides and you will understand it. So early term birth, the clinical question. Here's the scenario. You are the obstetrician. You are with your patient. In partnership, you are making a decision to deliver the baby today at 37 weeks gestation or to wait two weeks and deliver the baby at 39 weeks gestation. This scenario, of course, assumes there is no compelling reason why this baby would need to be delivered. So to deliver today at 37 or to wait two weeks and to deliver at 39. Now imagine you are the only obstetrician feeding the school down the road. The school down the road has 500 children in it 
And this, is, this scenario shows what the school will look like eight years from now. So you're the only obstetrician producing babies for this school, and every baby, every person in this school has come from the one obstetrician. What does that school look like eight years later? So here's the school of 500 children, and this, from the next few slides show what the school will look like if you had delivered all babies at 37 weeks as opposed to all babies two weeks later at 39 weeks. Well, the first is you will prevent a stillbirth occasionally. So if you deliver babies early by necessity and by definition, you will save, you will save a stillbirth. How many do you have to deliver to prevent a stillbirth? Well, the, the Atlas has estimated you have to deliver 2,000 at 37 weeks to prevent a stillbirth. Uh, using West Australian data, the answer is 1,300. For the sake of this slide, we're saying that it's 1,000. In other words, for the school of 500 children, eight years later, there's a one in two chance of an extra child in that school. Now, of course, this implies that the obstetrician has no clinical judgment, which is not the case with Australian obstetricians. So if something were to emerge as a complication or a risk factor, the obstetrician may elect to deliver the baby early for an obstetric or medical reason, or to start fetal monitoring and fetal assessment to assure it is safe. But for the sake of this scenario, we assume the obstetrician is not making such a judgment. So there's a one in two chance you'll have an extra child, but at what price? Each class of 30 children will have two children with an externalising behavioural disorder. They are, they are behavioural disorders where the child has difficulty concentrating and behaving well. Across every two classes will be one child with a need for a special educational assistance. And across every three classes, there will be two children with a basic numeracy problem. And if you don't understand that sentence, it might mean you've got a basic numeracy problem. Regardless, here's the school eight years later. So if we deliver all babies at 37 weeks as opposed to 39 weeks, eventually we may prevent a stillbirth, though that number would be reduced enormously by good clinical judgment. But we will have major educational and behavioural issues in that school with increased rates of behavioural disorders, need for special education, and children with numeracy problems. Now, of course, this is population-based data. So within an individual case, your child, this may not apply. And of course, extra attention after birth and extra education after birth can ameliorate some of these effects. So then, that is the situation with birth at 37 or 38 weeks gestation. Can we in Australia safely lower the rate of early term birth? Do we have the tools to do it? And the answer is we do. The Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance, rolled out across Australia's eight jurisdictions, and is now producing results. So in the Australian Capital Territory, published just recently, was the, was the result of the whole nine months ACT program. And after the first one and a half years, they had lowered their preterm birth rate by 10% but they'd lowered their early term birth rate by 34% and they had done it safely. So using known knowledge and with, with intensive implementation by people very committed to the task, we know we can lower the rate of early term birth, but it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of commitment and to sustain it is going to take a lot of investment. And that is what the fourth atlas is all about, it is taking a leadership role in turning around this increase in early term birth rate across Australia. The recommendations you will find in the fourth atlas come under these categories. Firstly, prevention of preterm and early term birth now needs to become a national priority. Implementing new clinical guidelines and education is effective but ongoing success and further improvements now require policy change. The national de debate needs to begin and include, can include discussion on targeted audits, development of indicators, and perhaps changes to payments from this Medicare benefits schedule. You will find details of these recommendations in the fourth atlas now being released, and I commend it to you. 
Over the last two decades, we have come to learn that life before birth is of critical importance for our future health, for our future propensity for illness, for our future behaviour, and our, for our future potential for happiness and success. And of all those things that we can, we can do in Australia to improve the outcome of people at the time they are born, it is to prevent preterm and early term birth so that every Australian is born with the best possible chance of a good life. Prevention of preterm birth and early term birth is now becoming a national priority. The Commission is showing great leadership in this regard and I commend the recommendations to you. Thank you for your attention.